Where am I at now? I'd say take a wild guess, but you guys went and guessed Arizona, and I'm in Arizona at this beautiful, beautiful lake up in the mountains. And this is not something I'd expect when you think of Arizona. You know, Arizona, the deserts, you get it. But I got lucky and found this beautiful, beautiful lake called Lyman Lake and it's in the northeastern part of Arizona by the Petrified National Force. Now the first day that I got here it was pouring down snow and today I got a window with no snow but still some wind but no snow so we're gonna go explore this beautiful beautiful place and it's a campground. I have been dealing with snow and high winds for the last four days so meaning I haven't been able to cook I've been eating sandwiches and so today I had to go to my next campsite that I had booked and well it was higher elevation and called for a bunch of snow and uh, they had cabins here so I ended up switching my campsite over to a cabin and uh, cuz I just needed a break. Um, I mean, I just got here and look, it's already starting to snow now. And it's supposed to call for snow all day and all night. And yeah. And then to top it all off, my electric blanket that I have inside my sleeping bag broke last night. So I was pretty cold sleeping where I was last night because we were getting snow there also. So I had to get a cabin. I needed the heat and I needed to be able to cook because I'm pretty sure I probably lost about 20 pounds over the last four days not being able to cook anything and just eat sandwiches and salads. I ate a salad too. But look, now it's, you guys can't see, but there's a lake over there. <laughs> My view is a lake. But the cabins here were pretty cheap, so that's good. But, oh my god, the snow is starting to come down. And I haven't even, like, unloaded my Jeep yet. Uh, ooh, I'm over this snow. Okay, it stopped snowing for a minute. Probably not for long, but this is the lake. Absolutely beautiful. I mean, I have to say, I love the scenery of snow, but trying to sleep in it literally in my Jeep <laughs> and the cold, it's pretty rough, especially since my electric blanket broke. So waking up this morning was, was really cold. But this is the cabin that I got. 
And the cabin's pretty basic. It actually doesn't even have linens in it, like uh, sheets and um, bedspread, pillows. It's just a mattress, some bunk beds, and a table, and a heater. There's heater. I mean, that was well worth it right there was the heater. <laughs> but I took my sleeping bag out of my Jeep and uh, put it on the bed in there and my pillow. And then the bathrooms. They let me choose what cabin I wanted. So they said, do you want a cabin on the lake? I said, duh. <laughs> yes, I want a view of the lake. <laughs> and then he said, well, do you want the cabin by the bathrooms? I said, well, with weather like this, then yes, I don't want far to walk to the bathrooms if it's pouring down snow. So bathrooms are right here and there's showers in there. And then just a basic little, little cabin. But uh, yeah, right now it's 1130 in the morning, almost afternoon. And uh, I'm trying to unload my Jeep and can't cook in the cabin, so got to figure that out. But I think it's supposed to clear up tomorrow, so I might suffer with sandwiches one more night. I might have to. Um, yeah. Well, this is Lyman Lake. Elevation 6,100 feet, I believe is what it was. That's why we got a bunch of snow the first day that I was here and still supposed to expect more snow. But this is just a small section of the lake. The lake is huge. It's so huge that most lakes, they have like boat restrictions of like what size boats can go in the lakes and everything, but not this one. This lake is so huge and deep that they allow all boats no restrictions to come in big ones little ones all of them and then earlier i was talking to one of the rangers here and i really love it when i talk to these rangers or camp post or you know anybody that works in places like this and they really are passionate about their job and they love their job. And that's how this ranger was earlier that I was talking to. I was just asking him one question and he just starts telling me all kinds of stuff about the place, which I thought was awesome. Because I didn't know there was a lot of history here. I just thought it was a beautiful place. <laughs> but apparently, there's some old ruins up the road, which we're going to go drive and check out. And those ruins, I'll talk about that when we get up there. But this lake, he said right now it's 65% full. He said, but if it gets really, really low, like around 35% full, then there's a chance of finding bodies down there. Sounds like Lake Mead, huh? And, and why would there be bodies down here? Well, because this is an old burial ground from the Native American history. Okay, so we're over here at the petroglyphs. Petroglyphs are apparently somewhere up here. And he was telling me also, he said, when you get to the top, he was like, make sure you're not just always looking forward. Make sure you look down at the ground because there's a bunch of petroglyphs on the ground. But, big old sign right here from Smokey the Bear telling you all the snakes that are out here and this is the time of the year that the snakes are coming out so I have left little one in the Jeep because I don't think it's that far of a hike but I'm not going to take the chance of going up there 
and running into snakes. Because even if I had her in the backpack, yeah, I, I don't want to do that. So she's okay in the Jeep. I mean, we live in the Jeep, so. But here is the other side of the lake. And apparently the fish that are in there is catfish. Yum, fried catfish and walleye. But it says, do not eat the walleye. I thought I saw another sign somewhere that said there was other fish, but maybe not. So this is the trail and I go, I guess that just leads up the rocks somewhere. And let's just hope that we don't run into any snakes. It's still a little early for them, but it is around the time that they're coming out. So we'll see. So a mountain or hill like this, this is exactly the area, kind of area that the snakes will hibernate in during their hibernation period. So, yay. <laughs> All right, I guess I need to start looking for these petroglyphs because there's no telling where they are but it seems to be like a pretty established trail just going on up so all right hopefully we'll find them I am very aware right now. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't seem like that long of a hike. Oh, there's a sign over there by the little stepping stones pointing off the cliff and there's petroglyphs over there so let's see that away what i gotta go down I just came up. Looks like it's down. But we're gonna go see what is around this corner over here.
Found them. <laughs> and there's even like a little sign right there. In case you guys don't know what petroglyphs are, we'll just read it real fast. It's rock art. Rock drawings or petroglyphs are made by chiseling through the thin layer of desert varnish that occurs on the surfaces of weathered sandstone and basalt. They can be found throughout this park. The older weathered petroglyphs are believed to be from the archaic period while the newer, more defined art is a Nazi, I probably said that wrong, 500 to 1300 AD. Numerous attempts have been made to classify rock art according to subject matter. Many theories and interpretations have been suggested, but none provides conclusive proof as to the meaning of these strange writings. I know it'd be really cool I know that there's some people that specialize in this and they can tell what these petroglyphs are and what they mean. I wish I was one of those people because it'd be pretty cool. But I think I see like a handprint. I think I see like two handprints. And a deer. I think that's a deer. And then a man. Or maybe a female. <laughs> huh. It's a pretty cool area though. I mean, like, look, you're like right up on the side of the cliff overlooking the lake. And it's like a little, little pocket here. Oh, I see another one over there. There's another one up here. Let's see if I can climb this rock. Get to it. That's another one. And this is just covered. You know. See the man? And then the hand. This looks like a cactus. Okay, we just got to the area where the ruins are and apparently according to the ranger that I talked to the really nice ranger and if you're watching because you know of course I gave him one of my cards and my stickers and he subscribed to my channel thank you nice ranger <laughs> but apparently I have to walk through this gate right here but there's a group of people that pulled up right beside me. So uh, I'm just letting them go before me, but they're in a Jeep. So they must be pretty cool people. <laughs> but here's more of the lake. I mean, you can just see how big this lake is. Walk down a little bit. I mean, it's, it's massive. I mean, look. Two 
too bad it's not actual summertime right now because I'd probably dip into this lake right here. I think that's what the beach area is for over there. But where I'm at, I'm still dealing with, right now it's in the 30s and it's one o'clock in the afternoon. Okay, so before we walk over there and go see these ruins, what I was trying to say <laughs> is there was or is about 80 ruins over here, but you're only able to see about three or four according to what the ranger told me. So they took 77 of these ruins and they buried them to preserve them. So, at least we still get to see some. And where's Mama's phone? Gotta grab my phone so we can get pictures. Well, it's always pretty awesome to see things like that. Um, there was the one sign that said there used to be a lot of looting in this area. That's pretty sad. So I assume that's probably why they buried some of those ruins was because of looting. And then this sign right here says the land behind the sign is protected by Arizona State. It's an Arizona State law. Collecting and removal of rock art any object of human manufacture or human remains disturbing human remains of any kind blah 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 violations are punishable by fines imprisonment or both okay i'm, I'm just gonna say if i was to come up on some human remains <laughs> i mean i definitely am not gonna touch them <laughs> That kind of freaked me out a little bit. I'd be like one of those, even though I know that's like a protective Native American history site. Knowing me, I'd be like, oh my God, human remains. And I'd be going to find that ranger and be like, oh my God, I just found human remains. <laughs> 
Yeah, I'm good on that. All right, let's head back to the cabin. It's pretty cold. Okay, I'm back at the cabin now and cooking dinner. Actually, right now I'm cooking little one's dinner. She gets chicken with her wet food and other food that she eats. <laughs> so she gets chicken breasts. Um, but I have to say, I feel like I should be celebrating right now because I'm pretty excited because this is going to be the first hot meal that I've had in about a week. So I have been living off of sandwiches and salads for like the last week due to the high wind and all the snow because I just couldn't cook in it. So I had to eat sandwiches and salads. So I'm hoping that this wind is going to stay somewhat calm because it's a little windy but not too too bad so I can cook me a hot full meal this time I'm cooking her chicken first because she's out of chicken and she's been out of chicken for the last couple of days and I had to like break up treats and put them in her food for her to eat her food because otherwise she wouldn't eat it without the chicken spoiled you're spoiled She's spoiled. <laughs> so, she comes first all the time. So, I'm making her chicken first just in case the wind picks up. And then I have to eat a sandwich again or a salad. Let's hope that doesn't happen because I really could use a hot meal right now. But, the spoiled little girl over there, she comes first. I guess I could put... I'm going to put my chicken on this side. So I have chicken thigh is what I'm eating. So she gets the, the breasts because it's better for dogs instead of the thighs. And I get my chicken thighs. Okay, her chicken is done. Still cooking mine. A little bit of sesame oil. Oh, that, was, that was a lot. A little bit of garlic. I can't put anything on her chicken. It has to be completely plain, so... Mushrooms. I've made this dish before on one of my videos, but I'm going to make it again. Because <laughs> I wanted it. So, it's a... It's an Asian dish. I like to cook a lot of Asian food. So, uh, this is a pretty cheap and basic dish. Pretty easy to make. So, right now I have chicken thighs, mushrooms in here. And I'm sauteing it with sesame oil. We got the ramen noodles, which we're going to throw away this seasoning packet because it's not good for you. It's filled with salt. I don't like salt. Mm. 
over here, <clears throat> I don't know if you guys can see, I have my jet boil. It's what boils my water for coffee and just it can boil water within a couple of minutes. That won't go out with the wind. Chop up some mushrooms, they're huge. <clears throat> So once that water starts boiling, I'm going to put my ramen noodles and some broccoli in there. And then it also has spinach. So it's chicken thighs, mushrooms, spinach, broccoli, and ramen noodles. So the broccoli's in there now, and then I'll put the noodles in, and then at the last minute I'll put the spinach in because it doesn't take that long for the spinach. Oh, it's overflowing. Hi, little one. Okay, I just strained my noodles and broccoli and spinach. So I'm gonna dump it in there with the chicken and mushrooms. Make sure I get all the spinach out of there. That spinach is good for you. Alright, I'll just clean that later. This is just like basically the same thing as soy sauce. It's just very low sodium. So just a little dash of that. And then if you guys have never had hoisin sauce before, holy moly, you guys are missing out. This is like my, my barbecue sauce on like some of my meat and stuff. But obviously it's going in this noodle dish too. This stuff is so good. Hoisin sauce. If you'd like to be one of my sponsors, Lee Come Key for hoisin sauce. so good <laughs> so when I use this on my meat I lather it but this is a very rich sauce so I'm not putting a whole lot in it Literally like three little small little 
flip-flops. <laughs> I'm going to put a little bit more of this in it, though. scraping my pan with my, my fork. I know it sounds like it, but I'm not. These are really good pots of pans, so I don't like to mess them up. Um, I was so excited to have a hot meal and to get it cooked before this wind started up. I didn't feel like looking for my wooden spoons. <laughs> Final product is done. <laughs> and then I get to eat with a beautiful view. Oh look, what's going on right here? What's, what is, what is all that? <laughs> I have to say I'm pretty blessed and lucky because these are the kind of views I get with my dinner. Um, all right guys I'm gonna eat now